Hello, Music Not News now. Today on Music Not News, I'm reviewing Dire Straits Brothers in Arms, partly because I'm old and therefore think that all modern culture is rubbish, but also because I slept all week and so I haven't had the chance to experience any modern culture, even if I wanted to, which I wouldn't, because it's rubbish. Now, for those of you who have never heard of Dire Straits, uh, they were kind of an 80s gateway drug to Pink Floyd. Now, again, similarly, I apologise to anyone who is not old enough to understand either the cultural or technological references to the 80s in this piece, but I console myself with the fact that often young people actually remember it better than we do, because after all, they read about it on Wikipedia a few months ago, whereas we lived it, then stored it in our brains, um, and then basically drank alcohol on top of it for 20 years' worth of weekends. Now, Brothers in Arms is still one of the best-selling albums of all time, although many people attribute that in part to the timing of its release. It was uh, one of the first albums to be both recorded, mastered and released entirely in the digital realm, the, the very first being Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which was written and recorded six months earlier. Because of this, many of the kind of 80s dickhead yuppies who could only hold a conversation about the, the various parts of their overpriced hi-fi systems longer than they could even about music, bought two copies. They'd have one on vinyl, and they'd have one on CD, just so they could show off to their friends the difference that this new and prohibitively expensive technology made to the one album they actually owned that they could play on it. If you had made any attempt to engage these people in conversation about music, it would only last long enough for them to ask, did you know that Sting sang the opening lines on Money for Nothing, in reference to the uh, first single from this album, which rocketed to number one, uh, displacing Vera Lynn's We'll Meet Again. And you did know this because by 1987 it had been repeated more times by more twats than every other piece of music trivia in history put together. Now, uh, regardless of this, there was this time between the release of Brothers in Arms and its inevitable best of compilation that followed it a couple of years later that Dire Straits were ubiquitous and they were the biggest band in the world and for a generation we all remember them as a band that we quite liked but got sick to death of years ago. Now listening, actually listening to the album, the opening track is quite pleasant and catchy, it's called So Far Away From Me, um, in which Mark Knopfler appears to have written down all the most obvious one syllable rhymes he could and put them into a single song. It's a bit like if you imagine Dr Seuss writing a book about long distance relationships. Um, the song really has a shortcoming, it is a good song, it's, it's about 90 per seconds too long and uh, this 90 second motif will unfortunately be repeated across the album, uh, sometimes more than once in the same song. And a case in point on this is second song, Money For Nothing. Now this is one of the most tedious and repetitive songs ever recorded. Uh, going back to this album after all these years, it's, it's quite surprising however that uh, the repeated use of the word faggot is what actually grates on my sensibilities even more than everything I remember hating about this song. When you listen to this song, it becomes, it immediately sort of takes you back to the time, the very first time when you decided you were bored of Dire Straits, which is ironic because when you listen to the next song along, Walk of Life, you're probably immediately going to think, no, actually it was probably listening to this song that I first got sick to death of them. Uh, the next song is Your Latest Trick, and this kind of mixes up the formula. Um, it puts the 90 seconds of unnecessary shit at the start of the song rather than at the end. Um, it must be said, however, that when the sax hook actually kicks in proper, it's a great song. It is a great song. And it gets you thinking, now we're getting towards the second half of the album. We're going to find some of those sort of half-forgotten gems that actually made made this a great album. Um, unfortunately what we actually get next is Why Worry followed by Ride Across the River which are not so much half forgotten gems as half forgotten back to back seven minute wibble wobbles of bobbins. Now next up is Man's Too Strong and this is, you know, this is, I've, I've done this word too, this phrase too much, half, this is a half forgotten gem. This is great to be honest, it's a great song. Um, unfortunately again it's followed by One World, which I've completely forgotten. It's not half forgotten. It's completely forgotten for some reason. Um, the reason that I completely forgot it became 
very much clear to me when I unforgot it by listening to it again. And I, unfortunately, I can't put that reason into words because now I've forgotten it again. So, there you go. The album's rubbish. Don't buy it. Don't listen to it. Don't don't even just listen to it on YouTube. Like, oh, no, wait, there's another bit down here. Oh, yeah, there's another song. Um, title track, Brothers in Arms. Now, Brother in, Brothers in Arms, again, clocks in at seven minutes. This time, none of it is wasted. This is, um, this is a fantastic track. It's an amazing tune. Um, it's, it's pure magic throughout. Um, when you get to this, the end of the album, nine times out of ten, your instinct is simply to go back and listen to that final track again, which incidentally is an awful lot easier to do if instead of listening to the album on tape or record, you've invested in one of these brand new compact disc players. Now, in fact, it's arguable that the album as a whole would have been better if they'd shifted The Man's Too Strong onto the first side and replaced the entire second half of the album with a 30 minute long version of Brothers in Arms. That, after all, is what Pink Floyd would have done. And uh, that's probably why every single person in the world today who still likes Dire Straits likes Pink Floyd more. So, in summary, if you're looking for uh, a great introduction to middle of the road 80s rock, um, go for Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA.